everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I have been tagged in a mom tag by Miranda and actually she is one of my good friends here on YouTube. We live about an hour away so I've met her, we've hung out, she has just a beautiful family. She is just such a special, beautiful person. So I'll leave her channel link down in the description box below. But she tagged me and I have some questions that I'm going to be answering. So let's get started. So the first question is, what is my favorite mom hack? So let's see, so well, let's, since we're almost into the summer, my favorite hack is taking, because you know all the kids love their popsicles and things, but oh my goodness, they get so sticky and dirty. When they get sticky, then they get dirty because all the dirt sticks on them. So, I mean, pretty simple, but I it saved my life throughout my whole 14 years of being a mommy to little ones, and that is to take a cupcake liner and put it in the ice cream cone or the popsicle. That way all the yucky stuff can fall in the little cupcake holder and they won't get sticky and yucky so that has saved me all summer long for forever and so I think that that's one of my favorite mom hacks. Number two, what is my most embarrassing mom moment? <laughs> oh, this is so embarrassing. So I was at the Walmart checkout and there was a gentleman checking me out and he kept staring at me very weird. And I was like, why is this, I mean, what is there like a booger in my nose? What is going on? It was a little more than just a booger. As you guys know, when you hold your babies, you hold them on your shoulder and you know, they're, they're like on your hip. And I'm like trying to put stuff in, on the conveyor belt, you know, just busy. I think it was my son that did it. I had my two little girls next to me and he had pulled down my whole top and I was just there and I had no idea because you know, when you're a mom, you are just busy. You're like, hey girl, stay right here, you know. I mean, they were little at the time, so little. I had my kids really close in age the, the last or my first three were very close in age, so I had, I didn't even notice until I went to go grab my wallet and realized that my son had just, you know, exposed me and that poor guy, I just, he didn't know what to say. He couldn't say anything. It was very awkward and one of my still due day most embarrassing moments. Number three, what part of the day do I love the most? <sighs> well, kind of like in the morning after I take the kids to school, that moment when I walk through the door, if I don't have any errands or, you know, things to do that day and I just have to come home and just work or whatever, that brief moment of just like, oh, it's so quiet it's so calm. I can sit and have a cup of coffee and just enjoy a little bit of my day and gear myself up for the the day. I think that is being a mom. I think it just helps to have that just quiet, so nice and oh, I definitely enjoy that. So, number let's see. Four, what part of the day do you like the least? I would definitely say when you pick up the kids because it gets so loud, so fast, and book bags are flying and shoes are flying everywhere, and I'm like, hey, you know, make sure that you're putting your socks in the dirty clothes hamper. Where do your shoe go? Where do your shoes go? Where does your backpack go? Do you have anything, you know, I need to sign? Homework, this, I mean, any, I mean, my bigger kids are pretty easy but still I have to be on top of it. They're still children, you know? So it's just constant. What about you? What about you? What about you? And they're hungry and they want a snack and this and this and this. And then as soon as I get home, the dogs are like, ooh, that's dinner time. So I've got all the dogs like, yes, mommy, feed us. So I've got tons of people at me all at the same time and it definitely can be 
crazy. So number five says what, let's see, number five, the, the worst thing someone said to you when you were pregnant. I haven't really, I think the only thing that was said to me that was pretty kind of like, okay, is when I had my third baby, so I had my son, my only son, and I had, um, my mother-in-law gave me a baby shower, and we had one of the, um, people there, um, say, you don't even look pregnant. I think you're just getting free stuff. I think, I mean, that was the only, I was like, oh goodness, because I don't carry, ba I carry babies very different than your average person. So I was just like, whoa, okay, that was awkward. But that was really, I think the only worst thing that someone's ever said to me while being pregnant. Number six, baby names you didn't agree on, and there was not one single name that we didn't agree on. My husband was like, you pick the names, it doesn't matter, and they're all Irish names, and so my husband loved them, I loved them, and it was just right off the bat, there was no, we just, me and my husband get along so good, and we just, I mean, we think the same, so it was really easy. Do you or don't, let's see, do or did you co-sleep? So nope, no co-sleeping. They were in their little bassinet till they were a few months old and then when I felt like they were ready to transition to a crib, they stayed in their crib. Um, I've never had problems with my kids jumping in bed saying they're scared or anything like that. They've always been taught this is your bed, this is where you sleep in, this is mommy and daddy's bed, this is where we sleep in, and i have they've been really good. I've never had an issue. Um, I've had, I've been really lucky. I have four amazing kiddos, but they've always been the best sleepers ever. I've never really had an issue with them not wanting to stay in their bed when it's time to go to sleep. Number eight, something you've bought but never used, a diaper warmer. We we bought one of those, or I think I got one from my baby shower. I never used it. I, I just, no. It was just something that I think is not really necessary. I mean, yeah, I never used one. I think that's just kind of a waste. I, yeah, it was just another thing to buy that you really honestly don't need. Oh, number nine, three hospital bag must-haves. Okay, you guys, chapstick. Definitely chapstick. You want to put several different kinds of chapstick in your bag and make sure that you have it. That's like number one. Number two is your own blanket. You guys, hospital blankets are so thin and gross, and I, it's cold, and even when I like put my heater up in my room, I was still freezing, so I highly suggest bring your own blanket, you're gonna need it, and then a robe. I think a cute little soft, cozy little robe, and you're good to go. So number 10, are you a routine mom or do you go with the flow? What does bedtime look like? So yes, I am a very, <laughs> very on schedule, very routine type of mom. I can go with the flow if need be, but I'm really like, oh yeah, I'm very like a type of person, this, 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 this. Bedtime routine, it's like, you know, we have quiet time, brush teeth, do this in bed, like it's strict, it's like, I mean, very tough rules here, but I mean, I want my kids to get good sleep so they do well in school so they're not grumpy. A well-rested kid is a happy kid. Okay, so number 11, what type of labor did, labor did you have? What pain relief did you choose? Okay, you guys, this is going to shock. Probably, when I tell people this, they're like, what? So all four kids, I had natural. I had no nothing. The first one I had at 32 weeks, so I can't hold babies past 35 weeks was my latest. I have a defective uterus, so it will not let me, once the baby turns about three, four, five pounds we're pushing, my body just lets go. I don't have any symptoms, kind of, it's just, I have like, it's like a cramp, and then I feel pressure, and then the baby's like coming out. So the first, Pregnancy was so crazy because I was 32 weeks, went to the bathroom, I guess, 
the water had broke there and my husband was sleeping and I was like, it was early in the morning and I was like, oh, I like pressure. That's weird. And then a few minutes later, I was like, oh yeah, something's wrong. But I didn't think I was in labor because everybody that I ever knew said, I asked, you know, first time I'm, well, how do you know? Like, how do you know when you're in labor? And everyone's like, oh, you'll know. It's the worst pain you've ever felt in your whole entire life. So me thinking, this is like not even painful. So I don't know what's going on. I didn't know I was in labor. And... I made my husband drive me to the doctor's office and the doctor's office was like, no, you need to take her to the hospital. We barely get into the hospital parking lot. I cannot walk. He is like thinking that I'm being this like sissy lot. Like he's, he's like, you have to walk. Let's go. He's starting to get kind of like, let's go. And I just like, I stood, stopped in the middle of like the street, like the parking lot. And people were trying to back out and I'm like, I don't care. I can't, I couldn't not walk there was so much pressure and then some just oh person came and he willed me a wheelchair they willed me in and they said oh no the baby's coming out now so that's why i couldn't walk because she was coming so all four of mine have been very fast um and every time i tell the doctor you know it's fast they never seem to realize how fast because they'll I'll be there. I'm like, okay, you know, it, don't leave. And then they'll leave and like 30 seconds down the hallway, the nurse is coming back and going, you have to come back in. They're like, what? I'm like, I told you guys. It's super, super fast. So no labor pains, pressure, um, boom, baby's out and that's that. Number 12, have you ever been mom shamed? I mean, I don't think anybody's ever said to my face anything. Um, you do when I used to, you know, have the little ones, my two girls that were like, I mean, they're back to back. And, you know, kids are, it's not, it's rough. And when they're toddlers, they scream and you're trying to calm them down and you're in the middle of the supermarket and you gotta get groceries and no one's there to watch your kids. So you have to take them with you. And so I would get people kind of like roll their eyes or, oh my God. You know tell your kid to be quiet but I mean that's mom life I mean if you're gonna have if you're gonna have kids that's what's gonna happen younger kids it's super hard sometimes to keep quiet and you know it's just mom life and now you know I see that as now my kids are way older I mean my oldest is gonna be 16 and you know I have teenagers and almost another so almost three teenagers and a little one I mean she's six but really she's going on 20 so I like to just you know I'll give moms a smile or maybe ask you know if, can I help you or can I help load your groceries can I do something for you because I mean we're all in this together so let's see 13 the biggest challenge you face since becoming a mom patience when I didn't have children I mean I mean I had patience but when you become a parent oh, the patience that you have to have is just ginormous I mean from them wanting to be independent and you've got to go like you're got to rush and they're like no I can I can, you know, tie my own shoes. And you're like, yeah, you can, but it takes 15 minutes. And mommy's like, gotta go now. We do not have 15 minutes. Things like that, just little things. Brushing teeth, I mean, getting them up for school. Just patience, pay everything that a mother does, she's gotta have a lot of patience. So that was a lot of, cha I mean, challenging at first. Now it's just old hat, I've had four children, but at the beginning I was like, oh my goodness, this is really tough. In 14, the best advice you've ever given and the biggest piece of advice you've give to a, you'd give to a new mom. <clears throat> I mean, I guess, kind of going with my last answer just you know have lots of patience 
I think if you're a very patient mom and you listen and you know get down on their level when they're little and have a conversation I treat my children like they are their own separate person and I treat them in each I mean I treat them with love but I treat them individually different because one thing may work for you know your first child and another thing might work for you know your last child not to because they're not all the same so you have to treat each child as an individual still give them that same love still you know do that part but I really feel like you can't treat them the same you have to have individual you know, things for them and time for them and I think that's really important. So if you're going to have more children, just make sure that you tr you listen to them and you don't treat them. I mean, they're a child, but I don't want to treat them like a child when they're talking to me about certain things. I want to have this deep level conversation and trust. And I felt like that just works for me. I mean, I've raised four amazing kids, my two big girls, I mean, they have their head on their shoulder and it is just amazing to watch and to see them grow and how just their mind works so beautiful and it's very, they're kind and they're thoughtful and they've installed, everything that I've installed in them, I, I can see it now, I can see them interacting and really taking the time to listen to somebody and even if we may not agree on the same things we'll have a conversation about it we'll and they do that with other people teaching them respect respect so if I'm going to sit down and talk to my child I'm going to show respect and kindness and you know monkey see monkey do I really believe that and so I would just say Treat them with respect. Remember, yes, they're a child, but they are their own person. And respect them because they will see you interact with them in a kind, you know, very grown-up matter. I mean, you tone it down when they're little kids, but, I mean, you still kind of get what I'm saying. Like, you still come to them being respectful, almost like a teacher would with your child, you know, from K or preschool all the way up. They sit, they have a very, or at least all the teachers that I've known, you know, sit and, you know, respect them, but they don't treat them like a child. And I think that's so important. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all so very much. Thank you, Miranda, for tagging me. This was so much fun to do. If anybody wants to do this tag and you are watching, feel free to do that. I'll leave everything down in the description box below, the questions and all that. And I hope everybody has just a great day. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscription button on the way out. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.